that not only after the Pittsburgh situation, but the one with the bombs that did go off, the, the, the ones that were tended to frighten people, to blame it on the President of the United States. I mean, we had attacks in the United States under other presidents, and we didn't blame it on them. And we had an attack on a shooting, actually, of an American congressman and an attempt to kill numerous Republican congressmen with a man who had a similar fanatical attraction to Bernie Sanders. And nobody asked Bernie Sanders, you know, were you responsible for it? I certainly didn't. And this is this is part of what the sinister nature of our politics today, that we would do this to this president. Um, to try to blame an act of anti-Semitism on him is insane. The man has been the best friend of Israel we've ever had in the White House. He uh, has, he, the man who did the shootings has on his website, or whatever it is, that he hates Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump has too many Jewish friends. So you can't win with these people who want to create political problems out of everything. And the president has every right to defend himself and to point out this hatred. If you're not honest about it, you'll never end it. The hatred is not coming from the president. The hatred is coming from the people that are trying to victimize him. To say that he has anything to do with this kind of shooting in Pittsburgh is a blasphemy. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible way to use anti-Semitism. I think all good Jewish people will rise up against them. And it's obviously a political tactic. But there should be some things that are beyond politics. And an anti-Semitic attack like this and the bombings that took place a couple of days before it didn't take place, but were attempted, are, are the kinds of things that you stay out of politics. Who knows why these insane people act the way they act? People who are engaging in political discourse and political discipline don't cause that. There's nobody I know on the American political scene, at least in one of the two major political parties, that wants to see violence. Just following up on that, though, it's been reported that the Pittsburgh shooter uh, seized on the caravan and the notion that the president, among others, has promoted that's an in, that it's an invasion of the United States and that that seems to have motivated him uh, in the near term to get up and he, he tweeted so or texted. What motivated the man who shot Steve Smith? Well, but my, well, what, 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 just to finish my question, it was whether, obviously there's not any direct connection between the president, but, but, but whether you are concerned just more broadly <clears throat> about the use of imagery and language like that, and that it indirectly and unintentionally well, creates... Well, this was the worst uh, act of anti-Semitism that we had in America. However, it's not that America has been immune to violence before Donald Trump. I mean, uh, we had attacks on American soldiers all over the world on the President Clinton. We had the attack, uh, we, we had, we had, uh, we had, uh, had 3,000 people killed by nine, on 9-11. Uh, if you want to go in numbers, that's the worst attack, at least in our recent history. We, we had, we had the attack on Fort Hood by a guy yelling, yelling Alan Akbar and who was promoted in the military because of political correctness. So you want to blame that on the political correctness people? I mean, he wouldn't be there if it wasn't for that. I mean, you could keep doing this and doing it and doing it, but we rip ourselves apart if we do it. The president has every right to resist thousands of people wanting to come into the United States illegally. Yes. <laughs> Not only is that a health hazard, it's a crime hazard, it's a public safety hazard, and it's chaos for them and for us, <clears throat> even for the good people that are coming in. That isn't the, you can't, you can't invade a country with gangs of people. <laughs> no civilized country in the world would allow that. If some insane person reacts to that, what, what does that mean? That means I can't oppose mob rule because some insane person will go overboard when I oppose mob rule, I should give in to the mob. So the irrationality of this is terrible. And it's all because it's an election. And I think we should stop this, and we should focus on why is this anti-Semitism still remaining in this country? It has nothing to do with the Republican Party. It has nothing to do with the Democratic Party. Anti-Semitism is a lot older than the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. It has, unfortunately, much deeper roots that are even harder to get to. But it's our job to try to get to it and root it out. So you have, you have people like